Welcome to the Paradigm Shift, episode 61. My goodness, talk about consistency. Today is a great day. Every day is a great day, but specifically today. Woke up, conquered the Brooklyn Half Marathon, my all-time best at PR. It's a hot day today in New York City. It's about 90 degrees. Um, but that's what life is. It's adversity, it's challenges. We push through uh, and we grow. I see you, Big Dave, uh, you sex icon, Quantum Quail. Um, we're gonna bring you on right now, and then we have a very special guest. Episode 61. Uh, let's do this. What a milestone, if I don't say so myself. Uh, Big Dave, I'm bringing you on right now. I know the audience uh, is jonesing right now to find out how many handsome uh, club sandwiches you had today. Uh, but the good news is we're not going to have to wait long. We're going to find out right now. Uh, and we'll be able to tell uh, by the glow on his face just how many. The quantum quail. Uh, the blessed bat. The sex squirrel. The sex 60 second man. And go all day. <laughs> there he is. What are you smiling at? You're just like, you're teeing yourself up for me to talk about those amazing shoulders of yours. See, when you look at Craig Siegel right there, he looks like a six foot two monster. Look, look at the detail of his physique. And when you meet him in person, he's a good five two. And he, he is good in every aspect of his five two-ness. And uh, I've eaten 10 handsome sandwiches on the 61 a magic number in baseball and a magic number in podcasts. And every week it's been a joy to be with you. Thank you for running the half marathon and still showing up today at 1.30 p.m. Pacific time. Absolutely. It was such a treat. I ran the fastest I've ran in my life. It, it was a beautiful moment. Uh, you know, ever since we had that conversation in L.A. When, at the studio when I came to visit you and you said, you know, your brand's about to explode. You should be very intentional with how you are perceived right now. I never wore a cutoff shirt again, uh, but it is Saturday midday, uh, so why not? It's a good time, man. There's a good time. I also teach to be you, right? To love yourself and be your essence. So if showing off those huge shoulders and huge biceps are you, we see you, Ken Clothier, there, you dirty, dirty dog, you, you <laughs> handsome devil. I see you there. Anyway, what, let's get started so we can bring our boy on here. Yes, let's do it. Ken, we're going to bring you on after one question. Uh, Dave, one thing that you talk about often, which has really made a, a massive impact on me and I'm very grateful, uh, is taking massive accountability. Um, because the way you explain it to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think this would be good for the audience, is it gives you complete control over your life. Yeah, so accountability has evolved in my life. You know, it used to mean responsibility. Uh, the problem with responsibility is liability is inherent within the context of responsibility. So you still end up in blame, shame, and justification. And then it evolved into this idea of what did I do to attract this to myself and what am I supposed to learn from it, which was closer to uh, where I wanna be with accountability, but it still had some levels of trade or negotiation that somehow I was doing something to attract, uh, meaning if I did something bad that I would be punished. And so I've taken it to the next level of accountability, not into blame, shame, justification, not into a trade or a negotiation, but simply what am I doing to participate in what's happening and what am I supposed to learn from it? Of course, life's about lessons. Lessons will keep on coming until you learn them. And as we learn those lessons, we realize that the pain, setbacks, and failures, and mistakes that are indicating those lessons are simply allowing us to ask ourselves, I am accountable. What am I doing to interfere with my best self, with my potential, with my better self? And that's where accountability is today for me. So what are you doing to participate in it? And what are you supposed to learn from it? Gives you complete control, not control of the universe that you somehow are asking for it or even being punished by it. Yeah, you're on absolute fire and you're glistening with that Southern California tan. Uh, but in regards to the accountability, it, you know what it does for me? It, it removes uh, the victim mentality, right? Because it's never going to be why me because you're looking to take ownership over anything. Even if something realistically probably wasn't your fault, you immediately go to try, how could I have communicated with my team better? What could I have done differently as a leader for them to perform better? Just in all facets, it, it, you release that victim mentality. Would you agree, Dave? Absolutely. You go from why me to try me. Nothing happens to you, man. Nothing happens to you. So try me and wait till you try my friend out, Kent 
Clothier. He is a legend amongst men and a dear friend of mine. And he's just excited to finally get to see him. It's been too long. Yeah, we're going to bring him on right now. Um, in the meantime, I'm just going to be outshined by you, uh, you sex unicorn. How did Miles hey, do it, by the way? They uh, won. They were down 4 nothing, and he came back and it won 10-5. So continuing on next game Monday at 7 p.m., in the uh, little championship he's in. Oh, talk about handsome sandwiches. <laughs> What's up, Kent? Thank you for joining us, brother. Good to see you. Yeah, you too, man. Happy to be here. I love it. Look Where at that, what's that sign. Look at that killer sign. The time is now. Now. Now, backwards. It looks like one to me. Uh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's do this. Let's dive right in. You ready for us? Yeah, yeah, let's do it, man. Awesome. I, I was looking at your content, Kent, because I wanted to I wanted to see what was going on, and, and I'm a fan right away. So I wanted to acknowledge you for that for the audience. If in case you're not familiar with Kent, you should absolutely check out what he's got going on. One of the things I saw you say, and, and I thought it was really interesting, is, and I wanted to ask you, what does it mean to get your company lean and mean? Well, I mean, anytime. Look, we we are in a in a a day and age right now where I think it was, it's extremely smart to acknowledge what's going on in the economy, right? And I think that, um, especially in my particular space, which is in the real estate space, there's been a lot of people that have experienced a great deal of success over the last two or three years. They've kind of gotten seduced by that success. They kind of believe that that success is uh, indicative of their efforts solely when the reality of it is, is basically any moron that got into real estate probably made money in the last three years. And so um, when you do that, you kind of get lulled to sleep. You know, you get lulled to sleep going off and, and start scaling, start adding costs, start adding expenses, start adding overhead, all these things that you kind of believe you are in some level of control. And by getting lean and mean is exactly what you guys were talking about earlier, preparing yourself so that you do not get, put yourself in a position where you get to play the victim, where you get to act like this happened to me. Like I didn't realize this was going to go down. This is stepping into and leaning into the situation right now, acknowledging that there's enough really good data out there that if you are in business and you're in it to win it and, and you've been through any downturn in business, like I know Dave has and I have, you understand that it is not always cupcakes and roses and sunshine, that you absolutely have to be prepared for uh, these macro shifts that happen in the economy, like what are happening right now. And if you are not, if you're not uh, getting your company lean and mean, cutting down on some overhead, right? Going and checking out that credit card bill, all those subscriptions that you've just been blindly going and adding, and they, you know, they're adding up to $2,000 a month now, right? $25,000 a year, all that kind of stuff. This is the time to start paying attention, right? This is the time to get it right. Because I can tell you, um, this is when fortunes are made. Um, this is this is when fortunes are made and it's the people that are prepared. It is the people that are lean. It is the people that are sitting on a lot of dry powder that can jump in uh, and take advantage of, of things that are happening in the economy. These are this is when I mean, massive, massive wealth is built. Unfortunately, it's also when a tremendous amount of wealth is lost when people are just, like I said, just asleep at the wheel. And, and real quickly, David, and I want you to answer, a lot of important people whose opinions mean a lot are predicting that we're going to step into a recession and stuff like that. But guys like you who've been through it, like, I'm not saying you get excited, but, but you have a different perspective. You think, like, where can I find an, an opportunity here when, when, like, this blood in the street, so to speak, I imagine? Dave, what's on your mind? You know, obviously, I have the utmost respect for Kent, and we share similar philosophies because we paid the dummy tax, right? We, we've learned and because we're hyper competitive and, you know, as young entrepreneurs and investors, we've learned our lessons. And it's interesting because so many people come to me for advice about real estate and about investment. And there's two things that I've learned with the over $100 million that I lost or spent in the dummy tax of the lessons is one, I asked, what's your timing and risk tolerance? Because I don't think it's fair uh, that everyone regardless of whether they think the economy is going to continue to grow, which three years ago you would have asked me, I said, look, we're looking forward to a correction. Right at the beginning of the uh, pandemic, I just said, be careful. We're looking for a correction. Right now, whether you think there's a correction or not, I want to know your timing and risk tolerance. I personally think there's going to be a correction. And regardless of a correction, let's just do the math, right? 
know your timing and risk tolerance. So someone comes to me and said, what about short term rentals? There's certain areas where I can be profitable by buying a short term rental. I said, yeah, but a few months ago, not years ago, a few months ago, your payment was half as much. Your, your, your price is the same and your payment was half as much. And regardless of profitability today on a short term rental that you can prove out because of the way that technology has worked within the system of short term rentals, why would you pay twice as much of a payment from two months ago? I mean, just common sense wise, why not save your money and wait for the price to get back to where it was in some respect or the purchase price to get where it was where you don't have to put as much capital down in order to effectuate a different type of thing. It's math to me. And if you look at what's going on, if just in the short term, these macro moves, the stock market, where'd that go? And where's the volatility in it? Look at crypto and NFTs and Web3. What's going on in the volatility there? Then the real estate market, our interest rates. Look, you, you just are ignoring facts. Now, if your timing and risk tolerance is one that is aligned with that kind of risk, hey, buy in. Right. I, I'm sure you'll, you'll do you'll do just well because you're aligned with your timing and risk tolerance. And that's fine. But I think it's really critical. And I'm taking a little extra time on my answer than I normally do, because I lost over 100 million dollars because I invested so much money in so many different areas without knowing my timing and risk tolerance. And here's the irony, completely financially illiterate, because I just didn't even look at the math. Right? I, I literally I over leveraged myself. I didn't ask for help. I had no idea banks could cut me off, right? I, I thought my equity was God, that my reputation was king. You know, easy, I, I have billionaire friends that this happened to in 2008, billionaire friends. And some of them were able to survive because they're billionaire. They had banking relationships with like Deloitte, right? B big banks in 2008. And what they did is they, for 30 years, had a banking relationship. They switched the person that had been working with them for 30 years in 2008 and then they called their loans. And so when they went into the bank, the new guy in there is like, who are you? Oh, you know, I'm so-and-so. I've been doing hundreds of millions of dollars of business with you. Hey, terrific, we're calling your loan. You owe me $200 million. I'm not lying. Like, I Legitimately, my private bank did this to me in San Diego. I, you know, I had 40 million that I was going in to get and they're like, uh, what's your last name again? I was like, oh, you know, I've been the dude in here for a decade making $100 million and you don't know who I am all of a sudden? These are the kind of things that bank do. They have a personal relationship. They just get rid of it when it's time to go ahead and cut your legs out. Let me, let me say one thing on that, Dave, because I think it's really important. Because I, I think that even though you're saying it the way you're saying it, it probably um, is important that people understand that these are not unique situations, right? This is not a bank doing this to an individual. Literally what happens is the moment that your assets start to drop in value. Well, your debt to income, your, your, ratio, your ratios start to change, right? And that's what puts you where now you are outside of the covenants of the loan, which now gives them the right to come. So you've made all your payments on time. You've done everything correct. You've got perfect credit. You've got money in the bank. Everything is perfect. But your assets, stock portfolio, crypto, real estate, they have dropped in value. And when they drop in value, they change the ratios on your personal financial statement. And that is what the banks look at and say, OK, now you're outside of our covenants. Now we get to call all your loans. And, and there's no personal there's no personal relationship. With it there's goes nothing. About it. It's just over. And this is why you see guys that are worth hundreds of millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars and have done everything perfectly all of a sudden they're bankrupt because the bank stepped in and said, you are, you're outside of the loan covenants now. And we get, we, we're trying to protect our downside. So we're going to take you out. And it is, this is a very, very real situation. You can do everything perfect and the bank can still do that. Yeah. This is great wisdom and for the audience. It's like, we're not trying to scare anybody. We're just trying to give you guys some understanding of this is how it works. So you want to get out ahead of that. Uh, and, and that's all ties back to the question about getting your company lean and mean. Well, let, let me just say another thing. So, so very specifically from a tactical standpoint, you know, cash right now is, is going to be an amazing asset to be sitting on, right? Get as much cash as you can, much liquidity as you can. Equally kind of stressing what Dave just said, when it is really, it is, we are the best salespeople in the world to ourselves. And we will, we will talk as entrepreneurs, as, as drivers, type A personalities, we can, we can seduce ourselves like nobody else. We can make any investment 
sound amazing to ourselves. The reality of it is, is it's all about the math. If the property cash flows or if the asset cash flows, is it producing a consistent return? Are you not betting on the appreciation? This is where people get always messed up when it comes to investing is they always believe the asset is going to go up in value. And when you do that, that's when you get hurt. If you just buy assets, specifically in real estate, if it just cash flows, you know, Dave's example earlier, if yeah, you can tolerate your risk tolerance is I can tolerate the payment that I'm making right now and I can conservatively predict that the property is still going to cash flow significant uh, amount of revenue, every month, then it's probably an investment that's worth discussing. If, you, if none of that is true, if, hey, it's going to be tight and I'm sitting here over, over selling the numbers to myself, we're going to have a 95% occupancy rate. Everybody, every property in the neighborhood is renting for $800 a night, but I believe I can get $1,400 a night. You start doing that kind of seduction to yourself and you will go broke quick. Dave, you're smiling. Uh, and this is very valuable. I, I think you bring, you know, Kent so smart because we do just lie to ourselves. And the other thing I want to bring up is asking for help. And part of the reason I wanted Kent to come on here is that there's people like Kent out there that are willing to help you. And, and it's not just help you invest, it's help you not invest. Uh, and it's made by the people you say no to and understanding the emotional aspect of the greatest place to put your money, which is real estate, because every law in the land was created in 1776 to protect the land owner. So to be a land owner has every benefit tax wise, every benefit in the legal sense, uh, being a lawyer myself, and I always love to make sure that a part and parcel of what I own is largely in real estate for this reasons, but it's also very dangerous if you don't ask for help. You know, all I needed to do when I was in my 20s and 30s were so much, especially in real estate, I wish, you know, Kent was in San Diego with me. I wish I would have known Kent or, or someone like him just to say, hey man, can you just check out what I own? Here's what I'm thinking about doing. There's the good news about real estate, unlike crypto or NFT, nobody has been in the business for 30, 40 years, right? The, the Bobby Castro's of the world, the Kent Clothiers of the world, the, like these guys, like myself, we've been around 35 years. So we have learned a lot of lessons, ask for help. And I wanna reiterate that with the real estate, especially, I'm a big fan of asking for help. I still do it today. As much as people come to me for help, I bet you I ask twice as many people for help that I give help to, because the fastest way to get to where you wanna be is ask people like, like Kent for help. Yeah, and also Ken, I know you're huge on not only being around big thinkers, but surrounding yourself with quality people. Yeah, I mean, I think that, that, you know, it really boils down to me for we all get a very finite amount of time uh, on this planet, guys. And uh, I think the older I've gotten, um, I've started to realize that this is not an infinite resource, right? Time, time is extremely valuable. It is the only thing as far as I'm concerned. It's the only currency we really have. And so as I've gotten older, I've just realized uh, through, you know, a couple things that have happened in my life, but certainly um, have realized that if I'm going to spend time with people, I want it to be quality people. I want to. I want to make. I want to make the moments matter, right? I'm all. I'm in the business of collecting moments. I'm not in the business of collecting crap. I want to absolutely spend time with people that matter, that that enrich my life, that I can in turn enrich their life, uh, and bring real value to them. I mean, I, I I know that you guys have in all likelihood. I know Dave has, and I know Craig, you probably as well. That it's just the conversations are different, right? It's just when you get around people and they're elevating you and they and there's no there's no uh, none of that trivial conversation, you know, cursory, superficial stuff. I mean, you get around some of the guys, you know, Dave, that uh, Ed Milet and John Gordon and, and saw all these guys and yourself. And I mean, these are people that there it is impossible to have a mediocre conversation like and, and that to me is what life is about. I just want to be spend as much time as I can with my family, with my friends and doing the things that really matter and, and, you know, pouring myself into other people and helping them, you know, benefit from that. But I have no, no interest in spending time with people that quite frankly are there to, you know, the, the time sucks, the time vampires that are just there to take, 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 and don't want to do, or not trying to do anything big with their life. I'm just not in that place anymore. Ken's got nuggets, big Dave. Well, now he, he's speaking my language now because one of the interesting aspects of what I study every day is time reconciling time, especially in gratitude. And what I mean by reconciling time with gratitude is that when you know there's light, love, and lessons in everyone, 
in everything. Well, you need to determine whether it's worth your time because the only construct of time exists today. So let me explain that to you because it's a very, a very big epiphany in my life. So today there's 24 hours. Everything that's happened before today is relative to that 24 hours and everything that's gonna happen in the future is relative to that 24 hours. But the man-made construct of 24 hours of how efficient, effective, and statistically successful, how productive, accessible, and gracious I am, only can be reconciled by a prioritization of time. So when I reconcile gratitude and time, I say to myself, am I gonna spend a Saturday for 30 minutes with Kent Clothier and Craig Siegel? Absolutely. The same way that I know that I'm elevated, my frequency in my neighborhood is elevated when we have our men's group, which uh, Kent was talking about with Ed and Edwin and John and Irwin, and the, the list goes on, David Nurse uh, puts these together. You know. I had to miss one of these the other day because I was in Puerto Rico speaking and I got paid a ton of money. And I looked at my wife and I said, I'm so caught because I'm reconciling my time because I got paid a lot. I'm down here and I should be at dinner at Mastro's with the higher buyer. Because in the long run, I'll make $500,000 for, for being at the dinner from all the elevated awareness that I received because I'm reconciling time in today what am i doing to now and that's why prioritization is the antidote to nothingness procrastination and feeling overwhelmed if you don't know what you want and who you can help and who can help you this is where you reconcile time and gratitude and that's why i'm here today i wanted to take that time to thank kent especially and you craig because we're elevating hopefully other people that are joining us as well yeah this is straight up awesome kent for the audience that might not be familiar what's the best way for our community to support you brother you know what? Just go to. Uh, I, I'm happy to help anybody that uh, reaches out. Hit me up on Instagram. You know, hit me up. Uh, you can always go to kentclothier.com or on my Facebook. Uh, we're, I'm really active on social, very much like you guys are. I'm, I'm like I said, man. I'm in a pl place in my life where people that want the help, people that are looking to uh, accelerate, people that are looking to go and and do something bigger, create a bigger vision. I, I'm I'm always about playing full out with those types of people. Yeah, this is an awesome conversation. Um, as Kent likes to say, uh, because it's mid-Saturday, why not fuck average, be legendary, life is short. Amen, brother. Amen. Couldn't have said it better myself. And Thank you, you live. Bye, brother. Right. Take care, guys. Take Thank care, guys. So Peace. Much. Thank you, Craig. Show off those shoulders, bro. Take care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to rip my shirt off right now. <laughs> Me too. Ah, Cam Newton, you guys. Take care. You guys. All right, guys. To, yeah, too much fun. The Paradigm Shift, episode 61. What a day. Brooklyn Half Marathon, uh, two jugs, great conversation, great dialogue. That's what it's all about. Stop by on a Saturday afternoon to drop a couple of gems, drop a couple of nuggets, and so forth. If you guys aren't familiar with Ken, go check him out. He's on fire. I can't wait to do some more stuff with him. Uh, and as always, my partner in crime, the Quantum Quail, the Sex 62nd Man, Big Bad Dave Meltzer. Uh, do me one favor, guys. Have an unbelievable rest of the weekend. Sharpen the axe. Uh, set yourself up. And like Kent was saying, get in some really good rooms. Have some really good conversations. Expand your paradigms and think bigger. Love you, guys.